Hey guys, I'm Charvo from the Kuhn 50 d uh, We are Arts Division Champions for high school this year. Hi, I'm Arthur. I'm head program for Team Kuhn 50 d and this is a little bit of an explanation on our World Tour Walk. Alright, so we'll start off with uh, our chassis. Um, we had a pretty simple uh, 360 RPM drive. Um, it was on the slower side um, for most teams, uh, but we found that having the eight wheels um, didn't let us sink into the field, and it also just gave us the more torque um, for the defense we played. Um, as you see here, we had a five wide uh, ram bar um, that cut everything together. Um, you can see it's bent in, um, and that was just because of the amount of defense we did play throughout Elims, um, and that's just how it worked out. Um, we also added some tracking wheels in here um, for our odometry that we were able to get working. It wasn't the best, but it was definitely um, precise and not just precision we wouldn't need it. Um, so next, going on into, uh, yeah, so all these were on screw joints as well. Um, and it's pretty simple, uh, pretty lightweight, low friction. We used four wheels, so we would sink less into the tiles to get more surface area. Yeah. So that helped us, you know, get over the bump and also had, had a really nice intake. Um, yeah. Um, another thing uh, with our chassis is we did have uh, low skirts. Um, most teams didn't do this, but we found that having the low skirts um, didn't allow any of the wedges to get in under here. A lot of teams did run wedges, we didn't, um, but it really helped us against defense. Like No one could really get under our chassis and uh, screw with our robot like that. Um, other than that, uh, we can go on to the shooting mechanism. So, so we were one of the only few teams with a triple shot flywheel. Um, we started the year off with a single shot and then we found pretty early, um, almost in November, we came up with the triple shot design and we kept it till February to um, come out with it. Um, we originally had it with a stagnant shooting height. We found out for triple shot we needed a way more uh, steeper angle, as you can see here. So for world, we added pistons to the entire mech, um, and that I can show you here, like how that works. Um, so, as you can see, it goes down. So this is for when you're autonomous and for uh, long range shooting, and when you're up close, we just go up. Um, it's a simple uh, 2600 RPM with a like, Vextex um, adapter. Uh, and then other than that, we had the option for single shots. So as you can see here, we did single shots, kept overfilling, um, and then we also did, we also did uh, triple shots. <laughs> yeah, so it didn't work there. Um, uh, we, yeah, so then what we did is, um, so this system, we can show you in here, was done through these two indexers that we had. So we had an indexer inside here, um, and then a second indexer right above it. So this whole back indexer moved, this one right here moved, and then the one inside moved. Um, and that was done through stacking some pistons, um, and this was kind of our uh, low, easy, tucked away. Um, other than that, um, uh, another thing we talked about our chassis was really fitting our tanks in here. So if you can see in here, it's hard to see. Um, we had our tank, brain, and battery all uh, stick into the back low in our robot. Um, this really helped our center of gravity um, and helped us be really low to the ground. So even if we were pushed or anything, we had a strong base, we can get flipped over. Um, no problem with that. Um, we went to our pneumatics, you want to talk about that? Yeah, so our pneumatics, we had a pretty unique system. Um, we didn't see a lot of teams do this. Uh, we used uh, this to fill, and using these three valves, we could isolate our pneumatic systems. So one, our, our two tanks were used for our indexing alone, uh, and then we would flip this, so it would allow us to fill our engines alone, which meant that even though in a match we could shoot um, probably like 78 times per match. Um, we could also launch endgame regardless, even if we were to get a leak or anything like that. 
uh, we're still able to uh, perform endgame because those points are critical uh, in any match. Yeah, and this really helped with uh, making sure that if we did spring a leak in our one of our systems, we didn't lose both systems. Um, and uh, what else did we do? We, we had um, in here, you could see all of our solenoids were easy access. We found that some of them broke. Um, we had a lot of issues with four worlds where they broke. Um, so we had them really easy access. Other than the one, our one solenoid for this and the regulators are all inside this back brace here. Um, so we'll, we can add a picture and show you guys that. But basically, there's a lot of stuff going on in the back here. Um, and we fit all of our wires. So as we showed you under here, um, it was all through this area. We had our wires and tubes that went through from chassis, um, tracking wheels and everything, and we added a skid plate just so that we don't get caught on anything. Um, we also had a bling drive. Most, people, most teams didn't do this, but we kept with it uh, throughout. Um, this was just because we found that under defense, even if we were playing defense, we were able to not get pushed around easily. And fight for rollers, we almost always got um, at least one roller on our side, and most of the time we got two, and that was really what made a difference in finals. Uh, in ours. Um, other than that, uh, it was just simple intake. So we did um, 600 RPM, uh, direct 600 RPM, and then our roller was uh, reduced um, twice. Um, we did, we used to have a 1200 RPM, which we were in regionals. We found that 600 RPM was just way more consistent, and 1200 RPM, we didn't really need it. Um, and then our roller as well, uh, we, made, we slowed it down just a little bit and bumped it up uh, higher than the roller just a little bit so that we always would get it to turn, especially with the new rollers, uh, even in dome, um, new roller, we didn't have any issues um, because it wasn't too quick, but it was just fast enough for no issues. Um, and then moving on to overall how we just mounted uh, our plates or our towers. Um, we, did, we did it through five wide plates, so we took five wide and we cut it into custom um, plates to mount. So if you can even see here, this is a five wide plate that we drilled a hole into to fit our tank and it was able to mount our piston. Same thing with this over here. It's hard to see, but you can kind of see it in there. Um, we had a five wide plate and that mounted to our um, towers and these are really strong and they were um, tucked away. We actually learned that or got that inspired from um, RIT um, who did that last year. Um, yeah, so moving on to end game. Uh, these are they were very simple. We had four uh, end games that were all low, uh, actually extremely low, uh, to make sure that we never shot out. Um, and because of the system we did here, we didn't have any issues with air. Um, and basically what it did was that it held pressure to hold the piston in, and then as soon as we released, it just dumped all that air, and then this went limp, and it would just shoot um, our yarn with a, just a couple uh, weights. Um, pretty simple. Uh, anything else? Yeah, programming. So, in terms of programming, we only used four external sensors. Um, we used three rotational sensors for our tracking wheels. One, each one had one. And then we had an internal measurement unit, or an uh, inertial um, sensor. Uh, what that helped us do was get our odometry working. Uh, we used the inertial to average our, um, our turns just so we get the, the least amount of error possible, so we have more data points. Um, another really big sensor that we used was uh, the motor encoder for our flywheel. So not only were we able to use it to get uh, accurate readings for our uh, flywheel velocity, but we were also, um, which we used to integrate a uh, TDH controller, which helped us get really consistent shots um, when we noticed from the beginning of the year, like really early on that um, using the uh set voltage function or base PID didn't really work. So we decided to use a TV controller, which gave us really nice, consistent shots um, with faster settling than uh, PID or anything like that. Um, but we also used it for something pretty unique. Uh, what we did is we used it to reset the 
uh, encoders and the inertial measurement unit on our robot, which basically allowed us before matches, because we noticed before matches when people were resetting the game or uh, resetting the field, that our gyro would drift, um, just due to how it works and all the uh, external environmental uh, parameters, we noticed that it would drift. So uh, when we spun our flywheel like that, it would reset our sensors, and why we did that is Facts didn't allow you to use controller inputs before the match, so we had to find a nice simple solution that wouldn't move our robot um, so the driver would drift further, um, and that was what we came up with. Yeah, so if you probably guys saw that world, um, before a match, you just go and spin the, the flywheel. Um, this really helped in our the semifinals, because we were almost waiting for an hour um, before the last quarterfinals um, re ran and we kept playing. So we had to set up a robot and we couldn't take it off, but then our robot was sitting there and all our value was slightly drifting, especially for all on shooting. So what we were able to do is just go next to our robot and um, spin the flywheel, and not change our placement or anything. And that would just reset all our gyros and everything back to zero. And that really ensured that we didn't have any um, like dumb issues. Yeah, it just allowed us to get really consistent shots. Awesome. Yeah. Um, Another thing, yeah, uh, another thing is just that we made sure to box in a lot of things. So if you can see in here, all these pink screws going going on are all boxed through the C-channel. Um, and we did this through these McMaster car um, spacers, which are really nice because they're exactly, the, uh, they're thin and right through the exact length of the C-channel. Um, so you can see that in a lot of places, we just had that going through. Um, and all through our chassis and even the bottom is all braced. Um, this really ensured that, especially with so many matches we've played this year, um, we've played Elims through finals at almost every competition and made sure that the bot just stays together um, and it doesn't like fall apart before the end of the day, really. And not too many bad metal. Um, coming from our program, which we really don't have too many parts, um, we kind of make, have to make sure that these parts don't, they're not like wasted really. Um, anything else? Yeah. Yeah, so you can see our battery placement as well. Um, so we did use the VEX clips um, and we found really no issue with them just because where we placed the battery. Um, it was really tucked away and the only way you could get to the battery even is when our whole system was pumped. So if you see that after uh, let's say I, I dumped the entire system. Uh, there's literally no way of getting to the battery, and it also meant that no other team could get to the battery as well. So we never had any battery fail failures. Um, we had some last year, and after that we started using more uh, zip ties, rubber bands, and we found that this year it's just just tuck it away um, enough so that we can get to it when we need to, but no one else can um, really. Um, other than that, a lot of screw joints, so barely any axles, except for the intake and then some in the chassis. Um, there were barely any axles. Um, and everything's on quick swap. Um, mo most things are in easy access, so if anything breaks. Uh, for example, uh, right after our finals, or actually our finals two match, our drive motor was broken. Um, you might have seen it in our movement. We weren't able to move properly. Um, so it was actually this drive motor right here, um, and we were able to quickly just quick swap that uh, in our dome pit, um, and we were fine for that. So it was, we used the quick swap, and it definitely is very helpful. Um, you can see our intake actually. Something interesting is um, it broke before our last local competition, um, and we just added like a quick fix bar that went underneath it. Um, and we kind of kept with it just because it worked and it was like our, our good luck charm, I would say. <laughs> it, it, was, it, it was just something that just worked, so we didn't uh, really rebuild it or fix it. Um, it was kind of a gen fix, but then it kind of it stayed together pretty well. We didn't have any issues with that. Um, and all of our robot used ABS, so we found it, it just looked clean and then it was low friction. Um, so our disc could Go in, it was really nice, smooth, no issues with that. Um, and we did, for this robot at least, we used the screws from RoboSource, 
we found it just quicker builds. Um, the looks were okay, but it was just the quicker build just was so much easier to just get whichever part we needed. Um, uh, we had some issues with our radio, um, which actually did hurt us at Dome. Um, and throughout the whole competition, in addition to the radio, uh, this is a brand new radio we bought at Worlds, but I, I think it's a radio placement that was not too great because it was on the entire system that moved. Um, it, it didn't have too many issues in local competitions or any testing here or on, even on Bluetooth, but at World we had some issues, so I would recommend if you're doing something like this, um, try not to put your radio in some like, vulnerable position and maybe somewhere else. There are more rubber links, but we still had some issues with some DCs. And every time we DC, we would, our fly would go back to zero, so that we would have to re-spin, um, and then it would lose time. Um, yeah, so I think one, something unique as far as, not the robot, but strategy-wise, um, we played a lot of defense, even though we were triple shot, fly would score pretty well. But then we found out that we really couldn't keep up with the scoring of some of the top teams, especially in our division, like Kelly and Robocause. Um, so what we did is we kind of switched to this defense, uh, offense defense thing, um, where uh, Blank, our partners, were main shooters. Um, so they had a free reign of, with their puncher, just filling up the goal while we played defense on two robots, which worked pretty well. So we were able to keep uh, every team at bay. They, they still got some shots off, but we were able to keep it close enough so that with our roller gameplay, we were able to make sure we get most of the rollers. And most of the time we won Auton as well, we got that pretty consistent. Um, and yeah, it was pretty, yeah, it was, it was a good competition. And then this is our final, final build. So, yeah, yeah. Um, that's about it. Yeah, that's about it. And if you guys have any questions, put them down below. Okay. Good luck in over under. Over under, yeah.